Thank you. The first item of business today is general questions, and our first question is from Peter Chapman. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what investment plans it has for transport infrastructure in North Aberdeenshire. Minister Hamza Yusuf. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. The completion of the AWPR Barmedi to Tipperty project will provide a dual carriageway linked to Ellen and bring significant travel benefits to communities and businesses north of Aberdeen. Construction work is well underway in the £745 million project, which over the next 30 years is estimated to bring up to 14,000 jobs and £6 billion of benefits to the North East. We're also taking forward a number of improvements uh, to the Aberdeen to Inverness rail line and given a clear commitment to dual the A96, which will see delivery of around 86 miles of upgrades between, upgraded road between Inverness and Aberdeen by 2030. Mr Chapman. Uh, thank, I thank the Minister for that res response. We recognise the AWPR is very important to the, to the North East, but the Scottish Government has undoubtedly succeeded in, in re-announcing previous manifesto commitments as new spending on North East infrastructure on several occasions. But will the Minister now make a substantial commitment to support the North East economy and thousands of Aberdeenshire commuters by agreeing to extend the duelling of the A90 past Ellen and through to Europe's largest white fish market at, at Peterhead? I, I think the Member, although I'm only three weeks into this job, is a little bit ungenerous in terms of what the Scottish Government has done to the North, uh, the North East. On top of what I've already uh, mentioned, of course, you'll know that the uh, £170 million pound improvement for the Aberdeen to Inverness rail link, as well as the £200 million uh, pounds of improvement in terms of Aberdeen to the Central Belt, £24 million towards Lawrence Kirk. The drilling, as I've mentioned, of the A96, uh, on top of the AWPR, Balmeria to Tipperty, I've mentioned the Hodigan roundabout. Uh, and of course, in terms of uh, Aberdeen, Fraserburgh to Peterhead, £25,000 that had gone into the feasibility study. Now, of that, that shows a, a commitment uh, to, to, to the north and northeast of Scotland. In terms of uh, the further options that he mentions in terms of drilling of the A90, what I would say is part of the city deal. Uh, five million pounds is for uh, an appraisal uh, in terms of strategic, uh, a strategic look and a strategic view of how we can better improve road and rail infrastructure in the north and northeast. So if the member has specific ideas, as he's mentioned today, then he should work with the local authorities, work with me, Transport Scotland, and the other stakeholders uh, as we take forward uh, this work, which will commence this year in terms of the five million pound uh, part of the city deal appraisal uh, of, of transport uh, links to the north and northeast. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, can I very much welcome the work that is progressing on the AWPR and on the duelling of the road from Balmedy to Tipperty? Can the minister uh, advise us, in the light of the importance that travel times have for business and commuters, uh, what the specific benefits of the investments the, the government is making will be on travel times? Minister? Well, of course, that's a key benefit of the work that we're doing in terms of the completion uh, and, uh, of the AWPR. We'll cut journey times across Aberdeen by up to half uh, at peak times and provide much improved journey time reliability and facility improvements to public transport uh, on local roads. Uh, the AWPR Balmedy to Tipperty uh, project forms a core part of our commitment to improving transport in the North East, but along with that is the new Inveramsey Bridge in the A96, which the member knows well about, uh, improvements to the A90 Hodigan roundabout, which I've mentioned already, already as well as the proposals to duel the A96 between Aberdeen and Inverness. These, uh, taken along with the other projects that we're doing uh, in and around that area, will ensure that all of Scotland's cities are connected with a high quality transport system that will generate economic growth. Question number two, Ross Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether the £254 million infrastructure investment that it announced in January 2016 will be included as part of the Aberdeen City Region Deal governance structure. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, the Scottish Government, I believe, has demonstrated very strong support for Aberdeen in the North East by committing up to £125 million. That's alongside the £125 million from the UK Government over the next 10 years for an Aberdeen City Region deal. Alongside that, as the member says, we have committed to an additional investment of £254 million in transport, digital and housing to, to deliver a more significant step change to the economy of the North East. However, despite that, uh, we sought to expand the city deal to include this further investment. This was not agreed to by the UK Government. Uh, consequently, this further investment by the Scottish Government does not form part of the city deal or its governance structure. However, I have, I have asked my officials to work closely with both the civic and business leaders of Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire to ensure that the regional partners 
are kept updated on progress with additional investments so that the new city region deal governance structures can maximise the impacts of the city deal investments? Ross Thompson. I thank the Minister for that answer. Uh, I do have here the papers for the Aberdeen City Region Deal Joint Committee, which meets tomorrow. And on page 15, officials advise that an agreement on the additional 254 million has yet to be ratified. Given that projects within the additional funds, such as the railway improvement from Aberdeen to Dundee, have been repackaged and re-announced since 2008, and that these plans are not even given a grip one stage, uh, have not been able to progress to grip one stage, it's crucial that these projects are subject to proper governance and to ensure delivery. Since the heads of terms for the UK city region deal were signed back on the 28th of January, can the minister confirm when the Scottish Government will snap, stop dragging its feet and provide clarity on when the announced funding will be made available for the projects identified and whether or not both councils and Opportunity North East will have any input on how the funds are spent? Cabinet Secretary. I'm not sure whether the member actually listened to the answer that I just gave, but just to talk about re-announcements, which his colleague did. His colleague last week re-announced to this parliament that the city deal, £125 million from the UK government, £125 million from the Scottish government, was in fact a £250 million deal from the UK government. That's a re-announcement. It's also not true. But the fact is, we tried to expand the city deal. It was the UK government that said they would not put any more money in. These investments are over and above that. Of course, there's an interest for the governance structures of the city deal, and they will also want to know when we're investing to help inform their own investment decisions. I've undertaken to do that, and we've also said that the various things, whether it's the rail works the member identified, the digital or the housing works, uh, they will be undertaken within the same 10-year time period as a city deal. And of course, we'll keep the governance structures uh, informed. But let's be clear, this was additional from the Scottish Government because the UK Government wouldn't put any more money in. Mary Evans. Thank you. The Lawrence Kirk Junction is a vitally important issue in my constituency and I would ask the Scottish Government what the timescales will be for the delivery of the junction. Cabinet Secretary. As Member of States, I, I confirmed that the £24 million would be made available for the provision of a grade separated junction at the A90, A937 Lawrence as part of the package of additional investment alongside the Aberdeen City Regional Deal. It will be undertaken over the course of the City Deal period, the 10 years which I mentioned. Transport Scotland will now progress the scheme to the next stage of design development and thereafter through the relevant statutory procedures. I'm sure the Member understands that the possibility of inquiries means that you can't be absolutely definitive at this stage, but delivery of the scheme will proceed once those procedures are satisfactorily completed. Louise MacDonald. The Cabinet Secretary will know, of course, that the railway project is perhaps the biggest single item on the list of these projects. Can you tell us what discussions the Government or Transport Scotland has had to date with Network Rail about the detailed plans and when an announcement can be expected? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I had discussions myself with Network Rail on the day that we announced these and uh, discussions have continued between Transport Scotland and Network Rail. Of course, there is a, a degree of feasibility study to be undertaken first of all, but that work is underway as we speak. Question number three, Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve public transport in rural areas. Minister Hamza Yusuf. Uh, I thank the member for the question. The Scottish Government is investing over £1 billion annually in public transport and other sustainable transport options to improve connectivity between communities and businesses, including our rural, remote and island areas. Bruce Crawford. Uh, thank the Minister for his reply. Could the Minister please confirm that he is aware that First Bus um, intends to discontinue a number of services in my constituency, making an unsatisfactory public transport service situation even worse? I am due to meet with him shortly the company shortly to discuss the matter. But for today, I'd be grateful if the Minister would confirm that he'd be prepared to engage in the discussion with me about her bus services in places in the north of my constituency, such as Killin, Tyndrum and Cray and Larrach, and places in the west, such as Drummond and Croftami, how the public service, public transport service there could be improved for connectivity for local people. Minister? Uh, I'm deeply concerned about the impact of uh, First East proposal as soon as I uh, heard about their proposals, uh, I met with them uh, as a matter of urgency. Of course, I will meet the member uh, to discuss further uh, what the impacts will be. What I would say uh, to the member, because of legislation we brought forward, there is an increased period of time for consultation between uh, the operator and, and local authorities and other stakeholders to see uh, what can possibly uh, be done. I have urged First East in my meeting with them uh, last week to uh, have that, uh, have that uh, discussion as a matter of urgency with local authorities. It is my hope uh, that other bus service uh, operators uh, may well uh, step in uh, 
to, to, to provide those services where they're reduced or indeed uh, whether they are withdrawn. But I am deeply concerned. Of course, I will meet the member. I will also look to meet other MSPs uh, and indeed other stakeholders, bringing them together and I've tasked uh, Transport Scotland uh, to look into how we can do that as a matter of urgency. Christine Graham. Well, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I know you've had this meeting uh, with First Bus East Minister, so you'll be aware of a proposal to cut entirely dedicated bus services to Borders College and Gala Shields. And I wonder if the Minister could advise, or perhaps a colleague could advise, if there's any scope for support for these services from the closing the attainment gap, because you can hardly close the attainment gap fund if you can't get to the college. Minister. I thank the member for the question. I will, of course, have that discussion with uh, colle colleagues in, in, in education. What I, what I would say is I'm entirely aware uh, of the impact that these will have. I will talk to the member uh, herself. I will bring, actually, MSPs uh, from across the areas that are affected together so we can have that conversation. My hope is, uh, as I said in my previous answer, uh, that other bus uh, operators will step in where there are gaps, uh, and, and I would hope that those discussions uh, move forward. But, of course, I will have uh, a discussion with the Education Minister, uh, and I will update the member uh, on that discussion. Question four, Runa Mackay. That's your members here. Right, question five, Gordon MacDonald. To ask the <coughs> Scottish Government what noise level monitoring it carries out on the trunk road networks. Sorry, Minister Johnson. Uh, there is no routine programme of monitoring of noise levels on the trunk road network once a project uh, has been complete road scheme specific before and after noise monitoring is undertaken. When an environmental statement identifies noise as a potential significant environmental issue, uh, construction noise is also monitored on that same basis. Noise monitoring near the trunk road network is also undertaken uh, by Transport Scotland in certain specific cases. Mr MacDonald. I thank the Minister for that answer. A number of my constituents who live near the A720's Edinburgh City Bypass complain of excessive traffic noise. Could the government consider measures such as reducing the speed limit, low noise surfacing or barriers to reduce the noise level to my constituents affected by this problem? Minister. In terms of the A720 Edinburgh City Bypass, uh, I will meet with the member and discuss with the member uh, where exactly along the the bypass his constituents uh, stay, uh, but I would say that there have been a number of uh, site-specific noise uh, monitoring ex exercises that have taken place since 2006. Uh, there was uh, noise uh, monitoring taking place at Gillespie Road in Collington. In 2011, Jacobs undertook uh, a week-long noise survey in Gillespie Road in Collington. In 2015, uh, Atkins undertook a noise survey at Moncton House near Old Craig Hall, uh, and, and, uh, and these have continued to be reviewed. And I would say that traffic uh, on the A720 has found to have increased by less than 5%, so there shouldn't be a significant, uh, that shouldn't have a significant impact on noise levels. But of course, uh, I will meet with the member uh, if I get more detail on where his constituents live. And of course, uh, I, I'm happy to meet with the member uh, on this issue. Maurice Golden. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, a Danish study has found that for every 10 decibel increase in the volume of road traffic noise exposure, there's a 12% increase in the risk of heart attacks. I ask what the Scottish Government is doing to ensure that homes near these busy roads or indeed under uh, busy flight paths are, um, are doing to ensure that homes are insulated against this noise pollution. Minister. I thank the member uh, for the question. I would uh, put him, uh, point him in the direction of the legislation at the moment. The noise limit threshold, uh, 68 uh, decibels, is, is noted in the Noise Insulation Scotland regulations for new projects. Uh, but uh, he has mentioned this new data study. I'm not aware of that study. I'm happy to discuss with the member uh, if he's able to send that study across. I can have that discussion with Transport Scotland, of course. Uh, we already do monitor before uh, any significant infrastructure projects. Uh, take place, but if there is more information that he thinks we should be looking at, then of course I'm open-minded to exploring that, uh, regardless of where it comes from and regardless of who it comes from across the Chamber. Question number six, Jeremy Balfour. Thank you, President Officer. To ask for the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with Education Scotland and the Scottish Qualifications Agency regarding the implementation of the Curriculum for Excellence. Cabinet Secretary, Mr Soon. The Scottish Government discusses the implementation of Curriculum for Excellence with Education Scotland and the Scottish Qualifications Authority on a regular basis. Mr Balfour. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the growing concern about the subject choices available within different schools. 
some schools offering seven national fives, some six, and others five. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree that many parents and children are concerned given the impact it has on the pupils' ability to choose subjects at higher and advanced higher level, and what does he intend to do about it? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, Mr Balfour raises a, a, a significant and serious issue and one that uh, I am looking at very actively. Uh, one of the issues about Curriculum for Excellence is that it provides greater aut autonomy and flexibility for the teaching profession to determine the best way to proceed, proceed with the delivery of the curriculum. So therefore the decisions to which Mr Balfour refers are obviously decisions taken within individual schools and local authorities. Um, the, one of the issues that we have to be mindful of is that young people must be able to secure through Curriculum for Excellence a broad general education, but they must then also be able to make the appropriate choices upon which they can found um, substantive parts of their working lives. Uh, so I, I give Mr Balfour the assurance that these issues are very much on my agenda that I'm discussing with the uh, SQA and with Education Scotland and um, as the government sets out its further thinking on the uh, delivery plan for improving attainment uh, we will reflect further on the points that he's raised with me today. Ross Greer. Thank you. On, the, uh, on discussions with the Scottish Qualifications Authority, could the Minister confirm in the light of the issues with this year's National 5 Computing Science paper what discussions have been had to ensure that such mistakes are not made again and what reassurances have been sought that students will not be adversely affected by something out with their control? Cabinet Secretary. I, I've written to the Chief Examiner expressing my discontent at the fact there were errors in the computer science um, exam which have been confirmed by the Scottish Qualifications Authority. I think, frankly, that is not good enough. Uh, these issues should be checked properly. Uh, there is adequate opportunity for this to be done, and I have made clear my discontent about that to the Chief Examiner. Um, obviously, uh, any, uh, th these are typographical errors, but I accept that they, uh, they should not have been there in the first place. And um, I, I will, I, I have, as part of the assessment process of the examination performance, um, any impact of these issues will be taken into account by the Scottish Qualifications Authority. Question number seven, Claire Hockey. To ask the Scottish Government whether the Clyde Gateway project will continue to receive core funding. Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Yes, the Scottish Government has agreed to provide £3 million of funding to Clyde Gateway over this financial year. Further support is being considered as part of the current spending review. Claire Hockey. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for your answer. Uh, contaminated land is an unwelcome legacy in my constituency because of its industrial past. Can the Cabinet Secretary give assurances that the Clyde Gateway project will receive funding, allowing it to continue its land decontamination work in the Shawfield area of Rutherglen? Minister. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and uh, I thank uh, Ms Hockey for her promotion, uh, but a further promotion in just a few weeks, I think, is highly unlikely. Um, <laughs> since, uh, since 2006, South Lanarkshire Council, uh, a key partner in the Clyde Gateway project, has benefited from over £17 million in funding through the vacant and derelict land fund. The Council has allocated over £5 million of this funding to Clyde Gateway to support the remediation of the Shawfield site uh, in Ruther Glen. Officials are currently assessing South Lanarkshire Council's proposals for allocating its share of the vacant and derelict land fund in 2016-17, and a decision will be issued in due course. Officials are also working closely with Clyde Gateway to seek further investment and funding opportunities to support their activities. Question number eight, Ross Greer. Apologies. To ask the Scottish Government how it supports the provision of additional support learning posts in schools. Cabinet Secretary. So, you know, local authorities employ all additional support for learning staff in schools and are responsible for all provision. Local authorities make provision in light of local circumstances and priorities, including their requirement to meet duties within the Education Additional Support for Learning Act. Ross Greer. Given a recent Enable Scotland survey has reported that many additional support needs pupils are feeling severely under-supported due to a lack of staff time, will the Scottish Government consider making support for learning a promoted post, thereby keeping the most skilled teachers in the classroom for the benefit of pupils who need them the most? Cabinet Secretary. I think what's important is that we make sure that the needs of young people are met most effectively, and that's the 
that's the point of which I'm focused, that uh, young people who have additional support needs um, are given adequate and appropriate support commensurate with their own circumstances and conditions. And that will be the approach that the government continues to take, consistent with the contents of the, contents of the Education Additional Support for Learning Act.